first thing I want to do is uh, is thank God for the abilities that each and every one has had. We have abilities that we don't know we have. And if we get with God in the right way, with a pure heart, and you can ask my son, he's sitting right there, and he'll tell you there's things inside of you that you don't know is there. And after the last time I preached, I started praying about the message that God would have me to preach. And we're going to have heart surgery today. So we're going to have several scriptures. We're going to be jumping around a little bit. But I got plenty of time. And last week I missed a couple of key points. And I don't want to do that this week. So I'm just going to take my time. If we have to turn this to one scripture, that one scripture means something. So I'm just going to take my time and we'll walk through this and pray that God will bless us and open the hearts and the minds of those that hear it. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time to be in your house, to worship, to serve you, to praise you, to bring forth your word, Lord, to your people. Father, it is such an honor to be in your house, to be where you can use us, where we can help others come to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just pray and ask that this would be all of you and none of me. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit would engulf the hearts and the minds of those that hear this message. We thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Okay, let's turn to Matthew 5 and verse 8. It's one verse, and I know that you've all heard it. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's a very simple verse, but as we go on through this message, you'll find out that the heart is a very deceitful device. And we're going to look at some of the things that the heart does. So I want you to turn over now to Matthew 15. We'll start at about verse 8, I believe. This is where Jesus is talking. And he's talking to the people and he's trying to get them to understand. In verse 8 it starts out it says the people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and they honoreth me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. But in vain they do worship me teaching doctrines the commandments of men. Now if we see a lot of this in the world today. Everybody that you run into claims to be Christian. You see them everywhere. And I'm not saying that they're not. But Jesus said that you'll know them by their fruits. You know, there's many Christians that say they're Christians with their lips, but their heart is far from what they say they are. And it's obvious that you can see that in them. Then he goes on to say, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth is that that defiles a man. What he's saying here, it's not what you eat, not what you drink, not what goes inside of your belly that defiles you. It's the words that come out of your mouth that defile you. And we'll learn a little later on in this lesson where those words are really coming from. Then came his disciples and they said unto him, Knowest thou the Pharisees were offended after they heard his saying? Now, when it comes to preaching the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it doesn't take very long when you're out there in the world to tell somebody what the Word of God says 
and they're offended within the next 30 seconds. They get offended very quick. Right? In the church. Right, and that's what I started to say. It's in the church. It's out there. It takes nothing to offend someone anymore. I mean, it's, it's horrible. And that's a lot of the reason that a lot of this stuff that's going on in the world right now is because this offends them. And a lot of times people will use the, the excuse offended to justify what they do. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now let's stop right there for a minute. 1 Corinthians 3 and 12 and 13. Let's turn there. I'll give you time to get there. We've got plenty of time. says, every man, or now if any man build up on this foundation of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stone, every man's work shall be made manifest for that day, and shall declare it. But it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work, whatever sort it is. So what they're what he's telling us here is when we do things, we are supposed to do things from the heart. When we do things from the heart, God knows the intent of the heart. He knows what reason we're really doing it for. Are we doing it for something to benefit us? Are we doing it for something to benefit others that's done in secret? that you want nothing in return. So all the works that we do here on this earth, it's all going to be on the, that day at the judgment seat of Christ. It's all going to be thrown in the fire, and what comes out pure is pure, and what burns up, burns up, and God's going to know what kind of heart you had when you did those things that you did. So the, the, the next verse talks about this. And it's Hebrews 4 and 12. We've heard this a lot. It starts out and it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and its discerning thoughts and the intent. So when we do things, we need to do them with a good heart. We need to do them with a godly heart. We need to have God in mind, and we need to be acting like the Lord Jesus Christ and doing the things that the way that He would do them instead of the way that we would do them as far as men's doctrines teach us to do them and things of that nature.
But with, with the heart being deceitful the way it is, when we turn back to Matthew chapter, or chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So, if, if the blessed and the pure in heart are going to see God, and then the heart is so deceitful, how do we get through this? How do we get to the point in our lives that purifies our heart? And it, it, it's a matter of, you know, if you look back in, in, through David's life, many times, many times, David asked God to look at my heart, Lord, show me what's in there that I might get it out. Show me what's in my heart, Lord. And when we come to that point to where we ask God to purge the things out of our heart that are not supposed to be in there, that's a spiritual thing. And we'll look at a few things how we do that. Let's turn to 1 Peter 1 and verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye have love for one another with a pure heart fervently. So one of the ways that we purify our heart, it has to be done through the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. It's an act between man and God and having a personal relationship with God to help us to understand and reading God's Word and knowing what's in God's Word to be able to discern what should be in there, what should be coming out of there, and things of the such. So now, we go to James 4. This talks about the heart and the deception. We've been talking about deception a lot in the Bible study. And I think it's in Jeremiah 17 and 7. He said the heart is deceitfully wicked. What does he mean by that? It means that the heart, there's things in our heart that we don't know are there. And the only one that can search our hearts is the Lord Jesus Christ, God. He knows what's in our hearts. And that should be in our prayers often is for God to examine our hearts and take the things out of our hearts that are in there that should not be there. So let's go to James 4. And he says, From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Well, that happens a lot. Come they not hence even of your lust that wars in your members? You lust and you have not. You kill. You desire to have. You cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your own lust. When we pray for things, we need to pray for things with a pure heart that's truly going to glorify God going to help the people that we're praying for or whatever it is or it's going to help us and it, or it's something that we really really need and whether it be food or clothing or housing 
But when you pray, Lord, give me a new Mercedes Benz, that I can go out and look good, you're praying the miss. You're praying for something that's not benefiting the kingdom of God. You're praying, praying the way that God doesn't want you to pray. And then it goes on. It says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever there is a friend of God, a friend of the world, is the en enmity of God. That word means hostile before God. You, you don't like what God told you, and instead of obeying God, you go against God and His Word and do what you want to do instead of doing what God tells you to do. It says, Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? It's, it's, a, it's a constant battle in our flesh. The spirit and the flesh are constantly battling one another back and forth, back and forth. The flesh wants the carnal earthly things. The spirit wants the spiritual things of Christ and of God. So we have to be careful in discerning what, what we're asking and doing. Do you not know that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwells in us lusteth unto envy? I love it when the Bible says this. But he giveth more grace. God's abounding grace is greater than all of our sin. First John 1 and 18 said, Every man has sinned. Every man has fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all got it in us. We've all got deceitful hearts. And I'm going to show you something here in just a second that will prove that it's, it's, it's a working relationship with the Holy Spirit. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right here's the key. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And listen to what he says. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Well, if, if our hearts are so deceitful and wicked, how do we purify them? We have to do that between God and the relationship we have with Christ. You cannot purify your heart if you do not know what that says. You cannot have a truly good personal relationship if you don't know what that book says. Because you're acting on your own with no guidance from the Word of God. What does it mean to be a double-minded man? Being a double-minded man is one that one way, one day, and one day, and the next day, and one day you've got all the faith in the world, and the next day you don't have any faith. You just don't know what to do, what to believe. You've got to learn to become steadfast and believe with all of your heart that God's Word is true and that God can do what He says He can do in our spiritual lives. It's a spiritual battle from the flesh to the Spirit. And when we go into that battle, oftentimes we want to give up and give in to whatever comes easy. And I don't care who tells you it's easy to walk with Christ. It's not easy always to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Himself said, they hated me. So if they hated Him, you sure aren't their friend. Because you're following Him they're going to be after you the same way they was after him. Right? One of the things that defiles the man is, is the, the sins that we let into our lives. You know, we we got to learn what, what is sin? You know, what, what is sin? And some of the things, sin simply means 
to miss the point. To do something that God said we can't do. And we do it anyway. So I'm going to go back here to...
I'm just asking everyone here just to take a minute. Don't be afraid because I've done this and he will show you if there's things in there that shouldn't be in there and I would rather ask him now and get rid of it and deal with it than die with it still in there. Amen. Because where does God judge you from in judgment? He judges you from the heart. So, with with if He judges you from the heart, what do you need your heart covered in? You need your heart covered in the blood of Jesus. Because without Jesus, no man can accomplish a pure heart. And having a pure heart simply means that you're trusting in God, you're trusting in Jesus, and you're taking your sins to God as quick as you know you committed them, you take them to God and you learn to grow from that. You learn what to let in and what not to let in. But no matter what you do, if you sin and you fail, you get on your knees and you repent to God, I know that was wrong, please forgive me, and you get a brand new start. I started at least 15 times in one day. In, in one day. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you all to, to take time for yourselves and ask God, show me what's in there. He showed me something that was in there since I've been coming here that I had no idea. But I was finally persuaded that that was exactly what it was. And I'm not ashamed to say it. It was pride. What's the seven sins that God hates the most? Pride's about number two on the list. And that's what it is. Pride. Oh, I don't need that. God's always made me away. I don't need to go down there. Hello? He's making you away right now. Why do you need to say that for? Why do you need to make him another way when he's already made you away? So I just want to encourage you all. There's tons and tons of scripture. But the, the thing that I wanted you to get was those that have a pure heart will see God. But how do we get to that pure heart? We can't do it on our own. It's a working relationship between us and God on a daily basis, walking in the spirit, killing the flesh. And what did James say? Purify your heart. He didn't say God's going to do it for you. He said you purify your heart. And you and me. All of us. And we do that through repentance. Through Jesus. The Holy Spirit leading us into the truths of the word. I see Dan preached on this this morning and he said the same thing. It will show in someone's character whether they're really a Christian or not. It will show in their life whether they really read and study it or not. You know, we've talked about in Bible study all week about a de deceitful heart. People deceitful. Being deceitful. Satan is so slick and so sly and that pride thing, that was all him. He was convincing me that that was not pride. I argued with that man for two weeks over that. He said, Ricky, calm, collected, cool. That's pride, buddy. So he finally got me to the point to where I started praying about it. If that's what it is, Lord, I want it gone. Out of here. I don't want it in my heart. That's what it was. And hopefully it's gone. I think Janie's seen improvements in that area too on my behalf. So let's everybody just always be cautious of what we're watching, what we're doing, what we're saying, and especially what we got, what we're letting in our hearts. Because that little word, that little bad word didn't just pop out of your head and out of your mouth. It all started. I'm not pretty.
which you used to have to be the one I'm looking at. <laughs> so, if there's anybody here tonight that needs to receive Jesus, that you need to bring a sin to the altar to get rid of it, you, I welcome you to come. I want you to come. Get a tape. And just take a moment to reflect how deceitful your heart really is and how much your heart can lie to you. See, everything Satan done, everything Jesus done, Satan tries to duplicate. And he's very crafty. And one of the things since I've ever said was for God to show me and teach me what sin was. And the more and more I learned about those things, and I'm not saying this in a bragging way at all. When you got the Spirit of the Lord in you, you can see Him coming all the way. Am I right? So I'm just going to stand here, be quiet for a minute, and everybody just ask God, is there anything in my heart?